Yes! That is right. We all know what that is. Horror Vision 2020 is back with you again today, and I am super excited about the upcoming guest, and I know Tommy is as well. He is one of my favorite character actors throughout the years, and I mean that sincerely, sir. He brings so much joy and a spark. It might be a little bit of himself, but it does not matter because he is truly a joy to watch. He tells us some awesome stories about what he's been doing during quarantine, how he's been getting by. He has a one-year-old, and that's been keeping him pretty busy. He has a great little story about Doom and his character in that. And how he almost got fired, at least he believes, which is hard to believe because his character is probably the most memorable one in the film. Uh, Dwayne Johnson, if you want to give us a ring, we can talk about the other side of that coin. He talks about working with Rob Zombie, in which Sid Haig, rest in peace brother, we all love you, got him. He referred him to the role, worked on Halloween 2 with Rob Zombie, then he went on to work with him again on 31 and 3 from Hell, and he has nothing but amazing things to say about him. He says he is an inspiration, not just to the cast, but also to the crew, straight across the board, and that's awesome to hear, because we all love Rob Zombie, and it's good to know that he's a good guy. And on top of all that, amongst all the films he's been in and all the films you have seen him in and you love him in, he is the Night King. That's right. On that eh, very little known show, Game of Thrones. So to that, good sir, we now bring you Mr. Richard Brick. Yes! Tune in right now. There he is. Nice How you doing, sir? Good to see you. Good. Very good. How you doing? Good, good morning or afternoon? Yep. Afternoon. Afternoon your time. You're in London, right? Yeah, it's like, um, what is it, 530, so it's almost uh, evening now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Light early for you there. Where are you at? We're both uh, in Los Angeles. Are you both in LA? Yeah. yeah. Well, safer at home. <laughs> yeah. And safer in LA than it is in London, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, re oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. You guys have got. We're the capital of the world, I think, right now. Uh, COVID capital of the world. What do we call them? What did she call those? We just talked to Barbie Wilde, one of the Cenobites. And she's Call, uh, she called them COVID idiots. COVID idiots. The ones that are protesting. <laughs> Where does she live? Yeah. So, thank you so she much. lives in she lives in London as well. Yeah, well oh, yeah. she does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we were we were able to book you guys right one after the other. Yeah, cool. <laughs> really. Yes. So, thank you so much for joining us, Horror Vision 2020. Um, we yeah. actually started this before the COVID thing because we wanted to be able to reach fans all over the world. Um, so, when this came, it, it worked out that we were able to do it fast. So oh, cool. we're Good. excited about it. And we're also going to do, um, uh, there'll be celebrity signings and stuff eventually for, we'll go, go live with people. And yeah. also um, we're going to do like horror trivia night and stuff like that with oh, the horror cool. icons. So, <laughs> so while, while, we're, while we're home, right? <laughs> Might as well. Keep us busy because it's, yeah. you know, find things yeah. to do. Yes. There's, uh, yeah, that's for sure. How have you been doing over there through this whole thing? What's been keeping you occupied? Uh, um, it's been, oh, I have a one-year-old, so that keeps me occupied. Oh. Then, uh, <laughs> that's definitely, that's a lot of work right there. Yeah, yeah. a lot more work than when I actually work. And, you know, <laughs> I, I most people are like, oh, great, I've got some time. You know, I can write my novel, or whatever they want to do. And I'm just like, oh, I have much more time when I'm working. When I'm traveling, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like on airplanes or, you know, when you act, you usually have a day off here and there. Or, Okay. whatever so i actually find that i'm having a lot less time to myself <laughs> <laughs> i've been in lockdown yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. You, can't, you can't uh re 
every game these years, so this is perfect for you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's there true. You go. I know. I have. <laughs> That's why I, you know, be in the, the softy. I don't, I don't have, I'm like, uh, all my friends have kids, so I know what they go through, but I, I do not. Yeah. <laughs> I have, you know, I have a 20 year old and a 17 year old as well, so I tell you, man. You're, you're, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm constantly putting out fires. Like, 17 year olds, like, I broke my phone again. Like, oh, I, mean, I got to like get the insurance and order him another phone. It's just constant. Once yeah. older though, it's better. I have a, I have three older ones, and they are so good. You know, so when they're, you know, they're in the business, you know, right now. So it's it's my two sons do visual effects, and then my other son works at like a big post house. So. Oh, and they where do they live? Are they all in LA well, as well? No, I just moved to LA. Yeah, um, you were in Detroit before. Right, right? and then so my other, uh, my oldest son moved here. My other two sons are in college right now but they'll be coming out here after. That's why I decided cool. to come out here after the big D. <laughs> and uh, just because I know all my sons are going to land out here. Yeah, so, that's a good idea. And yeah. it's been a lot of good uh, work for me. Actually, Jim, I uh, he was in a couple of my movies. And so I like to say I got him started. <laughs> oh, cool. Now he's the big superstar because of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, so we just... We You're just, the reason I moved to L.A., yes. It, it was, you know, I don't... It was because he was in a movie with Daniel Baldwin and a couple other people. So oh, cool. Yeah. So I want to hear about you, though. Tell me yeah. how you got started in this crazy business. Um, make sure my phone's off. After graduating from Duke, of course. <laughs> Listen, you know, he did his research. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been following you for a while. <laughs> Best basketball team uh, in college? Well, sometimes. Um, sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did I get started in uh, – I guess I went – I mean, I got into it, like, right before I went to Duke. And so I studied at Duke as well. And then I went to New York and just was a wild boy, as you are at 20, whatever I was. And then um, – I actually decided I better uh, sort myself out. So I got accepted to uh, like graduate type drama school, kind of like a RADA type school over here. Um, so I came to London in whatever it was, early, late eighties and studied for three years. And then after that, just started trying to get jobs. <laughs> it was hard going. I've always said like when I was younger, cause I lived in LA for a while. Uh, and then I lived in London a lot. I lived in, I've been back and forth. But when I was younger, I was not quite good looking enough to be the leading man, but still not like I look now. So basically ugly. So the ugly, <laughs> I, I knew if I could just hang in there until I was in my 30s, I'd probably do, do all right. So I hung in there. And my hair receded. My teeth got weirder. And I started working loads. So I think basically, you know, I just hung in. <laughs> I go for all these roles to be all these handsome guys. They're like, no fucking way, not not in LA. There's no, I mean, everybody's <laughs> gorgeous, and you know, I have you know, to tell character you. actors are like really, you know, like either big or whatever. And I just wasn't quite a character actor yet. I definitely wasn't a big man. So it's a real question of just hanging in there a lot of times. I think. Yeah. <laughs> you just yep. wait for everybody out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still hanging. I don't in. know what they're talking about, but it's. <laughs> that I yeah, love just got a receding hairline and crazy looking teeth and you know just that's it yeah you're good looking dude what me. were your like first roles that you did um oh like way back oh god I, oh, I was, like, any, any, just any running matter. around after people being a reporter or something really um I think the first what is it? actually the first kind of film real proper role was actually in a cool film. It was, and this is kind of where I realized that it was a question of hanging in there because I wasn't quite the right age yet to play the roles. It was a movie called Death Machine with um, Brad Dorif was the lead in that. Yeah, yeah uh, such a cool guy. And that was like, the first sort of big actor I'd ever worked with. And he was such a generous, to love him that. And that was in the mid nineties and uh, yeah, mid nineties. And that was shot here in London. 
But, uh, you know, I was playing a character. Truthfully, if they had the budget, they would have cast like Christopher Walken. It should have been like 45 year old guy in charge of a mega company. Um, you know, and, and they cast me at 28 playing this one. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think I pulled it off all right. But the fact is that, um, yeah, I thought then, I thought this really is a role for a 45 year old, but obviously they can't afford some huge name to do it. So they got me in and I did it. And it was fun, but that was my first like proper film. Um, and then I decided I was going to be, you know, that was it. I was going to become the most famous man in the world. So I jumped on a plane. I literally had a ticket to LA to do something else. So I just thought, fuck it, I'm just moving to LA. So I just, I literally, I literally moved to LA and then, and then waited tables. I actually did, but, but yeah, that was basically it then. <laughs> I did, yeah. I did like some other low budget films here and there, which I won't even name because I wouldn't want people to even look it up. But, yeah. <laughs> like the world, not, not very good films. Breakout film. Because I remember you most from Doom. Yeah, I that was when I really kicked off. Loved that character. It was so awesome. You know? yeah. yeah, that was great. I did Batman Begins like right before. Um, yeah. And that was cool. That was an amazing experience. That was kind of, I guess, I did, that was one of my very first big, big films. And then, um, and it was a great character. And then I went pretty much straight into Doom. And that was a lot of fun. A whole lot of fun doing that character. Yeah, yeah, that movie is fun. That character it was just that's one of the most memorable characters, you know, because you love love to hate him, <laughs> and that it's is amazing. <laughs> yeah, and all those, yeah, some because we. I remember I probably almost got fired too. I was tell because one of the things, one of the things I love about Doom, I'll say, is Comic Cons. It's the horror cons that I've been to um, over the last couple of years. Like when Doom came out, it just tanked. Right, it was oh. totally disappointing for all of us. Yeah, I did really badly at the box office. <laughs> yeah. They were all like, you know, these kind of, you know, they were going to make other ones or sequels or prequels. So I had to be prequel yeah. on it, but, you know, and then it literally just sank, it, it tanked. But what's been so cool is like going to horror cons and how many people come up to me and say they love that film. It's been over, really, literally overwhelming. It's been one of the highlights for me of going to, to cons. Is, people coming up and saying, oh, I love Jim Doom. That was my favorite film. And a lot of them weren't even around. They weren't even born when it came out. Yeah. I know, but that's, that's the a character you created. That's why I love it. Developed over time. But yeah, I, would say I probably almost got fired from it because um, I know now, like now, I'm, you know, I've been around a while, so I know stuff. But like, well, you know, they do like a table read, right? You know, Jim, so they do these table reads, right? And then you're like, we did a big table read after a couple of weeks of doing training and it was writers were there, the big producers and director and everybody. And I was like, no, you know, I kept going, my character, he wouldn't say that, you know, cause it was like, I had one line, one of them was something like, what are you doing, you know, during leave or whatever. And the line was like, I'm going to the beach. I'm like, nah, he wouldn't say, I was like really arrogant, you know, 30 something, bigger, I knew my shit. I was like, he would have said, I'm going to go down to El Hanto, lock myself in a motel room with a bottle of tequila and three she boys. And then oh, I, I, I literally that. wrote almost every line I changed. And then afterwards, like the director came out and said, man, you know, tone it down. You know, and I got this little chat with the director. I thought, yeah, yeah, whatever. And I realized, I think the producer, like, because they, in big studio films, I think they want you just to, uh, you know, unless you're the lead, obviously, you're the name is bringing the money. They kind of just want you to be like, read your hey, lines. Do your job, get them. Get yeah. that back, you know, and I was so like full of air. So luckily, most of those lines still stayed in, and I didn't get yeah. fired. Now I look back, I think I think it came pretty damn close. <laughs> and yeah. I was tested, like I'll just do what we say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's a good thing. I mean, maybe the producers had your back or something. I don't know. That's... I think the director did. In all fairness to him, I really think. Oh, he did. yeah. Well, because that's... those lines made that character that that yeah. made it really memorable. You know, so that was key to it. <laughs> it's times reading off the page somebody else's stuff, and they just yeah. want they want to hear they want to hear their words, and then sometimes they don't agree when you hear other people's words. Exactly. But like, yeah, iconic. Like some of those. Actor, you just like you just want to get through the scene, and you don't want an actor going. I can do this all with a look. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a friend, of James Russo, was in a couple of my movies. <laughs> He would always just X out and say, I can do this whole page with a look. <laughs> so yeah. that's why I'm like, okay, I love you guys actors, but sometimes. <laughs> just say that one line, please. I need that. <laughs> please. We'll do it twice. Make sure yeah. we have it. <laughs> it's good.
good. So how about Game of Thrones? Everybody wants to know about that one. Because Night King, that the, was great. the White Walker is is the Game of Thrones. You know, that's like yeah, that was really great. I came out of nowhere. I'd auditioned a few times and then for other parts that you know, they were okay. Um, one was pretty close to getting actually and I was so disappointed and I'm glad I didn't get it because then I, w I got my agent called me up and said, uh, will you, um, you want to audition again for the game? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, what is it? He goes, well, she goes, well, it's, the character's covered in prosthetics, he doesn't speak and he'll be only on screen this season for about a minute. And I was like, what the fuck? This one is covered. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, this is where I'm at. So, and anyway, I had no idea who he was or what it was about. I mean, they didn't tell me anything. They said, oh, he'd be important. So I go, okay. So I went, and then um, I didn't really know until, pretty much until we started shooting. It was like this first season was with this, like a little baby that had turned into a White Walker. And, um, and gradually I began to realize who he was. And then obviously, you know, it all, it all kicked off. It was, a, it, was a, it was an amazing experience. It was hard work because the makeup takes like six hours to put on two hours to take off, you don't sleep, you know, it's like brutal. Um, but the show is such a cool show to be a part of, so. It is amazing. Yeah. Like, was, did, Go ahead, you ask a question, Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, did you know when you joined that team, like how big it was gonna be, or was it already on its yeah, way up? Yeah, it was season four, so the show had been, was, was so, big. not as big as it became, obviously, but it was still was a pretty, pretty big show at that point. Um, yeah. Then no, I, you know, obviously didn't realize it would be, you know, it's massive. It's literally the biggest show probably in history on TV. Yeah, they said it's like the yeah. most expensive on top of it, but also yeah, that I could see. You know? yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. What do you say crazy. to the fans that hate against the ending? Do you have any opinion yeah, of that at all? I really liked it. I mean, I knew I almost said beforehand that it was going to be Mick. People are always no one ever likes things to end. Right. So you know, and and it's so hard to end things. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I thought they did a good, you know, a good job, but, but, and, and some people come up and just give me like a real, like, just hate it. And then other people say, and I, I'd say it's probably like 50, 50. I'm surprised about 50, 50, I get, um, you know, again, this is thanks to going to cons is that you get a real bunch of feedback. Sometimes you don't want the feedback, but you get it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's awesome. No. Right, thanks. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, all right. Go ahead, Tommy. Sorry. What was your favorite movie that you've done? Because, like, we love, I love you in Spy. Hilarious. Great movie. You know what I mean? So, there's so many different movies that, what was your favorite one? Um, probably uh, working with Rob on like 31 and Three from Hell. Maybe my two uh, favorites. Yeah. 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 I think of, the, of those two, I think Three from Hell is a stronger film. I think that's Rob's best film. And, uh, that was an amazing experience to shoot that movie because it was it was um you know i had didn't have a lot of time to prepare um because i came in very late on that film because sid not being well and you know it was just it was the way it all clicked and gelled so my favorite film would be and to answer the question quickly would be probably three from hell although 31 may have been the one that's had the most impact on my um so how was he to work with? Because we, we actually had, was D Wallace told us a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I saw they had D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she's great. She's yeah. amazing. She's amazing. I'm three from out. Absolutely amazing. Um, and such a nice lady. Uh, how is he to work with? Yeah. Uh, I, was, I always say, um, and it's not changed, that he's really my favorite director to work with for a lot of reasons. Um, I think, I mean, and that's not, taking off any of the, I mean, I've been really lucky and worked with like so incredible directors and, um, you know, some really famous and some not. And, and I've been, I don't think I've ever had one that I've not enjoyed working with, but uh, he, something about just for me, the way he allows and, and I think what he does is inspires so much creativity in everyone. Um, he's such a creative man. And so he's like bubbles creativity that everybody, even people that are, you know, like, being the runner on their first film, feel really inspired and happy to be there. There's never anybody who's bummed out. Everybody's just so buzzing to kind of make these films, not for a lot of money usually, um, and just doing it because they love doing it. And so there's a real, just like, he, he just creates this desire to do your best and be your best. 
and uh, that's what I love. Yeah, because I'm a huge fan of his music and his movies, so it's good. Yeah. He's a good guy. <laughs> so. My niece's a lovely man as well. Really lovely man. Him and his wife. Good. Oh yeah, Sherry. Who doesn't love Sherry? I actually yeah. buy all her clothes. <laughs> oh. She has a line of skulls or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's cool. You, you're part of another crazy fucked up movie called Mandy, I believe. Yeah. That movie's bizarre. It's, that was, it's, that it's really was, creative and really... Uh, is that with Nick Cage? Mandy? Yeah. 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 I'm watching now. <laughs> yeah, that's really worth checking out. That's an amazing film. It's um, a guy named Panos Cosmatos. I always pronounce it. I always call him Panos, yeah. but he's this sort of visionary young director who um, uh, had made a previous film that was a big cult hit and then this Mandy came up and like it's really just been a great experience for him. He was actually, at the, I hadn't seen him for a while and then he was at the Three From Hell premiere in LA because him and Rob met up like say last year or sometime and I remember getting a text with the two of them just sitting around drinking uh, drinking uh, espressos, like eight espressos each, and both, I can't even imagine what the two of them are like, just, ah, because they're both, he's, he's actually a very kind of shy man, Panis, but um, he's just, they're both these kind of visionary director types, so must have been a hell of a, yeah. hell of I know, a it would be a <laughs> and, like, That would be a crazy conversation. Yeah, but man, he's a great, it was, I only did one night, it was a great, it was a really cool role, because um, I had, I got actually, I was over here, I auditioned for that, and then I had to go in and do it on tape with the casting director. And I read, they, they asked me to read for two parts, like the, the chemist, which yeah. is this drugged out, insane, um, acid making chemist. And uh, the other part was kind of the second in command to the lead uh, baddie. And I was like, oh, the second command guy was going to, you could see he'd be working for like, three months straight right It'd be a nice little paycheck the chemist only got one day you know and it's not gonna be a nice paycheck so i <laughs> know which one i'm gonna get so i went in because i couldn't even figure out how to work out like what i couldn't get a handle on the second in command guy and the guy who did it ned Dene, he's a really great actor a yeah. um, really great actor did an amazing job like he brought this character to life because i read it and i was like i can't figure it out it's sort of the second in command kind of guy yeah and ned did it brilliantly Whereas I go into the canvas, I literally took my shirt off and did the whole audition like behind with my back, it's got all tattooed on my back. And then came around just in a weird, just it was weird. And I got a call from my agent two hours later of being offered the job because, and that's the quickest I've ever gotten a job. <laughs> I knew it when I went, I was like, there's no point. It's, the chemist is like, there's probably no one in the UK that could play a drugged out, weird redneck, Acid making chemist, as well as like a little bit, and that's what I do, <laughs> even though I haven't taken drugs in 30 years. That's just some weird state of mind, yeah. <laughs> it is the film itself, yeah. The film itself had so much life, and like your character. Even, I, I mean, I sometimes those roles are shoot longer than a day, but like you, it was pretty fun to watch. The whole movie's fun to watch, so. yeah. It is, it's just a trip, man. It's like, a, and I've had people say, Yeah, I watched it when I was on acid. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> I could barely watch it Stone Cold Sober without feeling like I'm going to nap. <laughs> yeah, if you thought Natural Born Killers was going to blow you out of the water on acid, be careful. You might not come out of this one, guys. No. <laughs> Madness. So what have you been doing to keep fit other than your one-year-old at home? Yeah, no, I mean, I've been, I, I keep thinking, oh, i got to do this, that. I mean, I've basically been, um, playing guitar a lot <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> I figured if I could just get because I did I do like a, a lot of yoga and I used to do and I was doing a lot and then the one-year-old made it a little bit trickier to do it as regularly so now I've gotten back to doing it very regularly which has been good and, and um so that was I thought if I can do my yoga and I can get finally get better at guitar because I've been playing for like 20 some years and I'm still a complete beginner I'm like it's time for me to really like Cause so I've been basically trying to do that and uh, bits and bobs of some other stuff and some like, you know, boring accounting and all these things that I normally lead right to the end of the year. I'm like, well, I might as well do it now. So it's just been, this has been really like, and because we can barely go out and see, I'm not sure how it is in LA, but with us, we're theoretically, I think we're only allowed out once a day for a walk. 
so it's mad so we'll go for these like and then and then you're you know wearing your mask and you're yeah, they, yeah can we, everybody and then like to get to the park and then you walk around the park and everybody you know although actually to tell you the truth people aren't dodging as much as they should be but it's yeah. that's you know it's been pretty that tough and my other two boys my little boys live they live only like two miles away so we end up facetiming for ages well, that's so that's, and then my day goes and i go i didn't get you know i was gonna write a script i was gonna I, no no i see that every god to hell with it i'm just gonna go i'm just gonna play guitar worst comes to worst I'll just move to Tennessee, buy a farmhouse, and just live there. And hit, you know, my guitar. Well, oh, yeah. Louisiana, <laughs> they have a big movie studio there. So. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it sounds like you guys are more responsible than and we, we are. are. Like the yeah. streets are swamped here. I mean, people are wearing masks and stuff, but they're not supposed to go out. They say ask you not to go out, but yeah. I thought that was I mean, pretty good in LA. I thought you guys are pretty, doing pretty well, but no. The, the, uh, I think as far as like most of the other states, like, yeah, they've got some pretty strict, strict rules. Yeah. But in like yeah. the process of reopening or closing it down was a lot uh, quicker than some of the states. Yeah, and it shows, yeah. But it, the last, like, go ahead. the last week, like I've noticed where I'm at in the Valley, the car like more and more cars just keep like you go out to get something from the grocery store and it's like man i remember like three weeks ago this was a ghost town and now it's yeah. like a normal business day i think everybody's getting back to it right from the president so people a lot of people that follow him think that it's okay and that yeah. you know everything's going to be fine because there's going to be whatever so it's tough and we have what that's what uh, uh, our friend was saying Covidiots, because those are the ones that are like going to the capital in Michigan with guns. Yeah, like, no, crazy. I know. Yeah. Or well, I was, I was say, was there any projects that you were on, or pre-production, or even in production that got canceled? Uh, there was a couple of things that were. Yeah, I was actually about to go. I was funny. I was going to go to New Jersey for a comic con, a horror con, and then straight to there film something in the Dominican Republic and I obviously got all literally shut down right at the last second. Um, that was right before we went to lockdown here. And then another project that looks like it'll be shot a little bit later in the year. So things are, you know, hopefully things will pick up, but I kind of, you know, it's going to be, it's going to take a while before, but I, you know, I'm hoping August, September, they, they start, you know, we can slowly get ourselves out of it carefully. For our business and entertainment, I don't think we'll have as much trouble as some of the other, you know, like the people that own restaurants and things like that. Yeah, our restaurants are tough. Yeah, people always want the entertainment because I know um, one of our, our, our other friends, Tiffany Sheppis, you might know her, she does the conventions, but she, her husband writes for a TED writer for the Mayans and a mm -hmm. whole bunch of other things, and they have them working all the time. Yeah, well, that's good though. Yeah, so they're going to be, they're, they're starting to back up. My son works at a post house that does all the digital intermediate for the big cable shows so mm -hmm. he says yeah they're backing up too so there's a lot of work going <laughs> so yeah. everyone yeah, will work in our business. yeah they're gonna have to start you know making some things and yeah things yeah stuff. probably be smaller sets or something maybe less yeah. Yeah. yeah i just get the hugging no one can hug you you know <laughs> it'll be the bump <laughs> Lots of those. yeah everybody wearing masks <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, they just opened golf courses here in LA County. I, I play a, a lot of golf usually. So they open up golf courses in Michigan. You can only walk, but you don't have to wear masks. But in LA County, I can't even imagine playing a round of golf wearing a mask, the whole, especially here in the summertime when it's 100 degrees. Do you have to wear a mask when you're golfing because there's only a few people? Yeah. I I, it's crazy. Yeah, no, they just, I got the email yesterday. So it's like one of those. I, I don't even think I'll go golfing until they change that even because I they're gonna have it regulated. They're have to make air cooled masks or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, so that's a new business, way. right? Everyone making uh, protective wear. Go golf is like a, a a very good like social distancing sport. Even yeah. if, if not, if you're on a cart, I guess. But if you're walking, <laughs> you're not ever within six Let's feet of anybody. Most just over. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wait, I didn't hear what you said. Sorry. I said just stay at home till it's over. I don't ah, know. True. Be over though. Who knows, right? Everyone's getting a little, you know, yeah. jittery. So. Okay, about, definitely. Uh, so, 
All right, Jim, ask your question. <laughs> Did we already ask it? He pretty much named it. He's going to say, oh, his favorite horror film. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> do, you have, do you have a favorite horror film of all, of all time? Of all time. Well, I think that the one I always come back to is uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, number one, just because that was so revolutionary, really. Yeah. Um, you know, I just think you know, up before, I mean, I, I love so many different kinds, but that one, I guess, if I have to choose one, that's the one that stands out. You know, it's just a good. And just even just the opening sequence with that sound and the flash, and then yeah. with John Larroquette's yeah. voice. So good. you know, it's like that's so you know, yeah, iconic. Made for, such, made for such little amount of money, and just the way you know, that's just you know, it's just great. I love you know, indie. It's just to me, that's the, that's how it should be. Was my very first convention. Um, we had George Romero. He had to cancel because he had a shoot. He had to go land of the dead or something. So Toby Hooper took his place as a friend. Uh, and it was so cool to listen to the stories because I don't know how it got made with how drunk and high they all were the whole time. <laughs> because I was yeah. like, he's telling me these stories and I'm like, what? <laughs> so yeah, it is an amazing movie just to get finished. You know? <laughs> Yeah. It was good. And a lot of the, the people we've been interviewing had Gunnar Hansen in a lot of their films. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's the, the, he was Leatherface in the first yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's cool because most people that's have been good. saying Halloween. So this is good. <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't a huge, I mean, Halloween was great, but that, you know, they're, I mean, they're all great. It's really hard to pick one, but yeah. that was definitely definitely my favorite i mean i also love a lot of wes craven's films but oh, yeah. you know but you know he's a, he's a great director yeah was, uh, one, the one i really liked was one of his first earliest was the um i can't remember the name now house in the last house on the left yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. that's so funny you said that because okay so the actor in that i forgot his name he's recently passed the the guy with the curly hair he um I, I saw the movie right before I met him at a convention and I was so terrified. I had never felt this terrified to meet someone because that character disturbed me so much. <laughs> and I go there and he's like, he's selling all these albums. He's like, oh yeah, he makes his living because he wrote two Elvis songs. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I was like, wow. <laughs> so I was like, oh, these strange. So I, and he was the nicest man. You're like, oh, but I was so scared to meet him. <laughs> And I don't get scared. It was weird. <laughs> but that is, a, it is such an iconic, terrifying movie. Yeah, um, I saw it a long time ago. I mean, re, I, mean I should rewatch it. Well, it was Sean it Cunningham was, and him really who went on to do Nightmare on Elm Street, and Sean Cunningham did Friday the 13th. So that was their first movie they did together. Oh, so, yeah, of course, you know, being a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, you're like the biggest fan. You I know. know. I ran into exactly. Sean Cunningham and I thought he was Steve Railsback. So don't ever do that because I got this look like. <laughs> so they look kind of like, but don't say anything unless you know. <laughs> Blacklisted. <laughs> so, no. Steve Railsback played Manson, right? What? Steve, wasn't Steve Railsback in Helter Skelter? Or... Yeah. And he was in, well, he's in Toby Hooper's Life Force also, which I love that movie, Life Force. That movie's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm the, the horror maven here, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even here yeah. out in Los Angeles, I think so. So that's good. But do you know uh, who Rebecca McKendry is? She used to uh, work at Fango, but now she is a professor at USC. And my, uh, my daughter-in-law, soon-to-be daughter-in-law, is working with her, but she does um, a bunch of horror cons consultations. She goes in and makes scenes scarier for the big movies. <laughs> oh, wow. What a I, cool. I didn't know that even existed. Oh, I wow. know. But also, huh. she directs Lifetime movies when she sees it. I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> Those are scary sometimes, right? <laughs> Yeah, always for all the bad reasons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, but I want to thank you so much for your time. Is there anything you want to promote? Um, no, 
Not really. I mean, I should have thought this before. Um, I can hear my one-year-old screaming. He's ready. Yeah. He's ready. So, <laughs> so I think I better get down because we were going to try to eat together tonight. So I better pop down there. Usually we feed him and then we get we get some time alone. We thought we'll eat together. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a think about that for the next time we have. Yeah, for sure. And sure. I got so much stuff coming. Literally, I, I I call myself like a pop up actor. I pop up in so many different things. But then when I get asked, "What are you in next?" I think, "God, what what am I in?" And I can't remember. It's about five so or six. Did you months. did you meet Jeff Miller, the producer? Um, uh, on I did. He does all those one? movies with Bronzy. The, he's a producer. He to put together something because he's like he emailed me and said, "What is a good actor overseas?" Oh, I did, I did. Yeah. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it. But yeah, he, that's what he said. He says he, he Unfortunately, I couldn't do it. It was uh, I was there were some issues with yeah. um, contractual stuff, and it was uh, important. It was just and but, also I wouldn't have been able to because in the end. If I had done it, there was something that came literally at the same time, so I probably couldn't have anyway. Um, but he seemed like a great guy. It looked like a brilliant script. I was really, I was actually really wanted to do it, but I think well, it was just more keep an eye on him because he's going to come back around because he's a producer and he really wants to work with you. So right. well, I'd love to work with him because I like his project. It was just yeah. literally there was some yeah. brilliant stuff. So yeah, and watch for his interview. It'll be here in a, a few days. So oh, cool. <laughs> you we'll say hi for me. Tell him I'll next let you time. know when this goes up. Thanks, do send me an email. But we'll come back uh, too, so you can promote whatever you want. And if we do horror trivia, we'll put I'll, I'll throw a bunch of stuff in the edit. Like I will let you see. Let's, I don't know. It'll be something. Cool. All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, dude. Thank you so much. Nice chatting, you, man. I start my one-year-old out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go take care of the visual little one. See you later. Play safe. Bye -bye. Play a little by too on the on the guitar. Yeah. <laughs>